Welcome to the Heels on Water podcast. This is where we learn to walk on the water in our storms with the courage, confidence, and grace we were designed with. I'm your host, Dr. Let Stevens, and I am glad that you found our boat. So let's put on our heels and get ready to step out on that water. I believe that the scripture which takes the most courage to obey is Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 and 6. I'm sure you're familiar with the text, even if you don't recognize the address. It's the one that says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and don't depend on your own understanding. Seek his way in all you do, and he will show you which path to take. In particular, that first part takes serious guts. Fully trusting God and not depending on how you think about things. In day-to-day practice, how easy is it for you to fully trust God with all your heart? No corner held back and not depend on your own thoughts of how things should happen or why. I can't speak for you, but for me, that's difficult and scary sometimes. Just think about it. That could mean that we would never ask why about anything. We would have no inkling of fear about anything. We would never have any anxiety about anything. We would fully trust. Now do you see what I mean? We're talking courage on full blast. Now don't get me wrong. I am practicing this courage thing every day. Some days I'm closer to the goal than other days. How do you get to that goal too? It's a journey and one full of practice time. You will go through and survive your situations courageously by getting your head and your heart aligned. An example of this journey is the one Dorothy took. You know her, the one from The Wizard of Oz. Check this out. Dorothy was a young woman who was deeply hurt. She had been so heavily disappointed that she questioned everything that she thought was solid in her life. Have you ever done that? Perhaps you've been so hurt that you doubted that you would even survive the hurt. This sent Dorothy on a journey searching for peace. She searched for someone she felt loved her and was trustworthy, and she searched for the confidence to believe in herself. I can relate to Dorothy. I have felt rejected and betrayed. I have had trust issues with people and I experienced miscarriage, divorce, and widowhood. In the 70s, Stephanie Mills portrayed Dorothy in the Broadway version of The Wiz where she sang a song titled Home. The home Dorothy dreamed of getting back to was a resting place, a place where there's peace, quiet, and serenity. If you can relate it all to Dorothy and me, I know you have had the same dream, right? On the way to finding home, Dorothy faced many experiences. Her enemy, the Wicked Witch of the West, tried to steal the ruby slippers, tried to kill Dorothy, and tried to destroy Dorothy's mission. Steal, kill, destroy. Does it sound at all familiar? John 10.10 warns that your enemy has the same goals also. He wants to steal your joy and strength. He wants to kill your future. And he wants to destroy your relationship with God. Can you see or feel how the enemy is trying to steal, kill, and destroy parts of your life? Part of Dorothy's journey dealt with the need for love. 1 John 4.18 teaches that perfect love casts out fear. Without fear, a heart is able to trust. Remember the first half of Proverbs 3.5? It said, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Because he lacked a heart, the tin man was not able to feel and interact the way he knew he could. He felt empty just as we do when our hearts are not aligned and connected to God. Dorothy had a similar problem. For her to find her way home, she had to trust Glinda. In real life, trust should be placed in the Lord because he is your rock, your shield, and your refuge, who can be confidently trusted. 
We see this in Psalms chapter 18, verse 2, Psalms chapter 62, verse 8, and Proverbs chapter 29, verse 25. Without trust, there's no way to achieve rest. You will not have peace, quiet, or serenity. I can tell you that my ability to trust was so damaged by father figures that I did not have the capacity to trust God as my heavenly father. That was then. Thankfully, this is now. It was a true process to get to where I am today. Now that I'm here, I have a surprising level of peace at times when I normally would not. I am thanking God for my new normal. Wouldn't you like to get to that point too? Another part of Dorothy's journey dealt with the need for peace of mind. The second half of Proverbs 3.5 tells us not to depend on our own understanding. To be honest, our understanding is severely limited. Besides already having finite minds, we also deal with our experiences creating biases and preferences and avoidances and other limitations to how we think. Scarecrow wanted a brain because he knew he had limited ability to think. Like Tin Man, he knew he could do and be much more. Like Dorothy, for you to find the way home requires aligning the way you think and what you think about. Thoughts impact your peace and your abilities. Henry Ford is credited with saying, whether you think you can or think you can't, you are right. Joshua chapter 1 verse 8 instructs you to meditate on God's word so you can prosper and have success. In everything I've gone through, it wasn't until I remembered 2 Timothy 1 7 that I was able to head toward obtaining and keeping my peace. The verse states that God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. One of the most helpful bits of advice I have ever gotten, I got while I was learning to train my dogs. That advice was, you cannot control an excited mind. Wouldn't you like to learn how to control your mind so you can obtain and maintain your peace? The third part of Dorothy's journey introduces you to the cowardly lion. His name alone tells you his story. To be a lion, he lacks courage of all things. This caused him to have absolutely no confidence, which limited his ability to fulfill his design and made him feel useless. Dorothy needed courage to overcome her fears of the unknown and the known. For you, having courage will help you find your way home. Home. Remember? Your resting place. Your place of peace, quiet, and serenity. You still want to go there, right? Do you remember Proverbs 3, 6? That's the verse that tells you to seek God's will in all you do, and he will show you which path to take. Joshua 1, 9 reminds us that it takes courage to follow God's will. Do you know the difference between courage and bravery? Most people don't. Bravery is doing something dangerous without thinking about the pain or the grief that may result. Courage is the ability to do something in spite of the pain or the grief. That means you've thought about what you might endure, but you're going to do it anyway. When we have courage because of the Holy Spirit, we are able to face the trials and sorrows that come. The attacks, the betrayals, the sickness, the disappointments, And still trust in God, as mentioned in John 16.33, Isaiah 41.10, Romans 8.37, and Psalm 56, verse 3 and 4. Knowing that I have Holy Spirit in me and with me enables me to do those things which scare me, like doing this podcast. I know I'm on the path God has for me, so I go forward hand in hand with Holy Spirit. Yes, it's scary to be courageous, but it's also a thrill when you get to the other side of it. As Joyce Meyer advises, do it afraid. Wouldn't you like to have an unmatched sense of accomplishment and a divine, you go girl. 
Stephanie Mills' version of home is such a beautiful reminder of what resting in God is like. A resting place. A place of peace, quiet, and serenity. You really should go listen to that song. Let's take some more tips from Dorothy. Be sure to wear the right footgear. Dorothy had ruby slippers. According to Ephesians 6, you have the gospel of peace provided by the blood of Jesus. Dorothy had Glenda's instructions. You have the guiding hand of God and his word. Dorothy had her journey at the end of which she discovered that she had within her all along exactly what she searched for. You are not unlike Dorothy. The good news is that you have Jesus in you, so you've got half the battle in the bag because you too have within you exactly what you searched for all along. You simply need to discover it and put it into practice. You have the divine trifecta. You have the mind of Christ to trust and to surrender to God's will. You have the heart of God to love unconditionally. You have the courage of Holy Spirit to go where necessary and to do what is necessary to fulfill the will of God. Remember what I told you in the beginning, that the journey will have plenty of practice time. Like Dorothy, none of it comes easily because it is a process. But also like Dorothy, if you look inside to the Spirit of God in you, you will find yourself at home safely trusting in God and resting in his peace, enabling you to walk and live courageously. As Zig Ziglar said, it's not going to be easy, but it's going to be worth it. I'm looking forward to being out here on the water with you. So follow the Heels on Water podcast so you know when the next episode leaves the dock and share the podcast with a woman you care about. Heels on, eyes up. Talk to you next Tuesday.